we made it. Well, my voice didn't, but you guys did. Um, I just want to first thank the Ethereum Foundation. This is the first time a design track is in a developers conference. Can we give them a hand, a clap? Awesome. And we also want to say thank you to the developers who have been so open and curious. Uh, we had this UX audit, it was so fun. Um, such high demand that we had to turn people down and make a queue. And so we're hoping to continue that post DEF CON, um, so watch out for those news. And so I'm not really going to talk about the why of UX, I think we're a little bit beyond that now, but we're going to talk about the how, I think it's important to know how UX is um, entering this field. So how does Web3 look and act different than Web2, right? How is the technology fundamentally different for our generation? How are we designing for the future? These are all really great questions that we're asking ourselves, um, which are really fun. And so exciting things. Honestly, we kind of, this is our first award show, and so um, obviously, it's a work in progress. <laughs> um, if you have feedback, we love feedback, so please let me know, um, come up to me. Um, but we are, if you didn't get a chance to sign up this time, feel free to sign up next time. You're, now you have a whole year to prepare. Um, so we're expecting some really great stuff for next year. And so we want to kind of talk about the criteria a little bit, right? So we had a hard time coming up with something that was inclusive, but, but here it is. So first, ingenuity. Is the solution clearly inventive or resourceful? We want to see some creativity in some of these ideas. And it's all a weighted criteria. And so we also want to look for language and visual cues. Are the action commands clear and easy to understand? Usability, obviously, really important. Um, is it easy to interact with? User research. Are these actions informed by research and insights? Um, I think we have some really amazing workshops and some talks that talked about that. And then accessibility. Does it reduce the barriers to entry? And so this is kind of what we came up with for this year and probably beyond where we're going to continuously work on it. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to uh, say thank you to our judges who are amazing and went through 85 submissions in like several hours. Um, so Samer Nakpur, who is the senior designer at IDEO, Connie Yang, who is the design director at Coinbase, and Dylan Field, who is the CEO and co-founder of Figma. We really want to create a well-rounded um, panel that had that were not biased to any um, project, but actually can give different insights. So instead of just telling you guys, we want to show. Um, and so without further ado, um, Dylan is going to announce the first winner. So, hey. And so for our first winner, we have the Bounties Network. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to introduce Mark Balin from the Bounties Network to the stage. Uh, we were so impressed with the Bounties Network because they've managed to tie crypto incentives uh, to real life action. And also we were incredibly impressed with the way that they were extremely thorough throughout their entire product and how everything was considered. So without further ado, here he is. Thank you so much. Cool, so, oh. There we go. Cool. So uh, when we first launched, you know, the Bounties Network a year ago, uh, and if you look at our GitHub commits, the way we started was always with standard bounties. It was always about building a protocol for bounties on Ethereum that would be interoperable. Um, however, we realized fairly early on um, that we would need to build a generalized product, an explorer, that would actually allow users to interact with um, the Bounties Network. And so um, this would also act as a testing ground, you know, and this is what we've been doing a lot for the last year, is testing how bounties can be used, you know, on Ethereum. And so um, we've, you know, we weren't incredibly happy when we first launched that Explorer. Um, it was an MVP, and you know, we recognized that you probably shouldn't be happy launching such an early product, but um, we were lucky that we were able to uh, get so much user feedback really early on. Um, and you know, this is user feedback about the user experience, you know, the details um, of, there we go. Maybe that'll start the video. Maybe not, okay. Um, we wanted to get user feedback about the um, 
detail, uh, the user feed, the user experience that users actually have to go through, um, the different touch points that users have actually outsourcing work, um, also the different details of actually using a DAP, you know, the different primitives we have, uh, like an address or transactions or gas, uh, and trying to figure out how we can abstract these for users so that they don't even have to understand and hopefully they can learn about these concepts without uh, even realizing that they're learning. Um, and so, you know, as, as our team grew, uh, we actually started rebuilding things from scratch, not only rebuilding, you know, our protocol call in our caching layer, but, you know, our explorer. And so uh, we actually built it um, in such a way that we would hopefully, uh, it would be so modular and, and very uh, usable and extensible for any dApp uh, in the ecosystem uh, to make it as easy as possible for anyone to build a marketplace. And so, um, at, you know, for, at the Bounties Network, all of our decisions we try to make uh, for our users. We, everything we do is in service of them and to try to help them create more value. And so, um, we were lucky enough that our hive of bees actually has been consistently over the last year giving us a ton of feedback about how they liked our product, what they didn't like, um, and that is really what has fed into this new explorer. And so, without them, I want to sort of give them a thanks first is, you know, without them, we wouldn't have anything here. We wouldn't know what we were building. Um, the next thanks I want to give is to the rest of the team. Um, a lot of them are sitting in that row over there. Uh, Corwin Harrell, unfortunately, who is our head of design, is not here, who deserves, yes, a round of applause um, for consistently advocating for users. Yes. Um, but also, Will Villanueva, our CTO, who put the team on his back actually building this product. Um, Matt and Matias, who joined us a little bit later to help us sprint through the finish. Um, and Simona and Blair as well, who really fight this battle on you know the front lines talking to our users gathering feedback um, and like I said in having that inform this um, next up I want to take a special moment and thank my mom uh, my mom has been our number one UX feedback tester since day zero um, and you know we're really we're really proud of our product and we think we've done a lot of good work but we also recognize that we are still failing the mom tests you know mom t moms can't use our product without hand-holding and so we you know we're about to run, for example, a project in Manila uh, where we want users to clean up uh, trash and you know, get to fulfill bounties for picking up trash. The problem is that users have to onboard to an exchange, a DAP wallet, and then our product as well. And so we've kind of realized that this is untenable, that we can't ever you know, achieve mainstream adoption uh, while this is still the case. Um, but at the same time, uh, we're also very lucky that the community is realizing this as well, um, whether it's, you know, challenges with onboarding and, you know, we're lucky to be working with the meta transaction group on actually fixing that problem, uh, whether it's the sort of solving education and onboarding and working with ETH magicians and a lot of the different dApps who are there as well to help sort of have some consistency around the language that we're using when we're onboarding users to make it, you know, easier for people to actually uh, join our community. Um, but also just to share as much as we, you know, can with with all the other dApps. Um, we've done a lot of user research and have hopefully some lessons that we can share, but also, you know, our component library, all the different buttons and UI elements you see um, are completely open source at components.bounties.network. So if you guys want to build a dApp and don't want to worry about design, you can actually reuse all of the stuff that we've already built, um, which is also very important. Uh, finally, we're really happy that these awards actually exist. They didn't exist last DevCon. Um, the number of design events last DevCon was pretty minimal compared to this year. Uh, and if you actually went to any of those awards, you would see that they were all overflowing with people who are all beginning to recognize that, you know, while scaling is important, uh, if we don't have any users actually creating those transactions, scaling won't matter. And so uh, while we recognize that there's a ton of work that needs to be done, not only with our product, uh, oh, we have mobile responsiveness, um, <laughs> not only with our product, but also with all the different dApps uh, in the ecosystem, we're you know excited because we realize that um, everybody is collectively recognizing that this is an issue and coming together to actually solve it together. So uh, thank you guys very much, uh, and thank you guys for the award. Awesome. Congratulations. Okay, and then next up we have Samir. Thanks, Amy. Uh, let's welcome Itamar from Argent. So um, what we really liked about Argent was, yes, first. What we really liked about what they did is that they're trying to attack some of the bigger UX problems in the space, namely wallet recovery without seeds and without uh, compromising on self-sovereignty. So I'll let Itamar say more about what they've done so far. Thanks, Amir. So, uh, first, uh, thanks for, for the award. Thanks, everyone. I'm Itamar, one of the founders of Argent. So, 
the vision at Arjun was really to remove all friction to enable access to, to Web3. And for that, we really started from a blank sheet uh, to rethink all problems, one, to tackle all problems one, one by one. Um, as a result with Argent, you have no more seed phrase, you don't have gas, thanks to abstraction with meta transaction and our relayers. Um, and you, you, and you, can, you can also use that to access in the future uh, all world of decentralized application. Um, we, and also no more cryptic address, uh, that's a big point for us, and no stress. And all that in a fully, fully decentralized way. So if we continue the onboarding, let's onboard at Arjun, basically. Um, you start with a first step, which is to pick your ENS. So we are very excited about that. Uh, every, every user of Arjun gets a free ENS, Arjun.xyz. Um, once, and thanks for the ENS team if you are around, so we are very excited about that. Uh, once you have picked your ENS, uh, we think about you know, the stress about handling uh, crypto today, and so we enable users to uh, get security alerts straight to their the preferred channel. It can be your phone, can be your email, and we will monitor for them transactions, and in case of suspicious transaction, we'll let them know about it. Um, we, of course, have the usual biometrics supported by most, most devices. And you are done with your onboarding. You haven't even thought about seed phrases. So let's, let's talk about seed phrases. For, for us, it's literally an anachronism. For 20 years, we have been telling internet users to not write down their password on a post-it and stick it on their, uh, on their screen. And now, for this new internet, we, we are building a new internet. We are telling people to write down on paper something even more critical than a password. So with Arjun and our Guardian system, you have no more seed phrases. So the way it works, so we have a smart contract-based wallet, and you are the owner of that wallet. Your guardians do not have your private key. You do not share that key, but they have some rights on your account. So a guardian is any kind of user account on the blockchain, and they can launch a recovery procedure. So concretely, that means it can be friends, family who download Argent, but you don't have to trust other people. You, it can be yourself with any private key. You can take a hardware wallet. You can take three hardware wallets, and there will be a consensus. And at any time, in case of issue, you can recover your account. We also have uh, looked at the best solution for exchange. Uh, decentralized exchange don't have to be complicated, so we are very excited about native integration of Kyber networks, where it's probably a, one of the simplest way to buy, uh, to exchange any type of token on your phone, one tap and you are done. Then let's talk about transaction. Transacting, uh, it's stressful, it's complicated, and it's sometimes dangerous. And what if someone takes control of the wallet? What if someone gets access to your private key? So at Arjun, you define a daily limit at a smart contract level. Someone gets access to your phone. In the current paradigm, in the current world, it's over. Someone has access to your private key, they will drain your account. With Arjun, the smart contract will see that there is a large transfer being triggered to an untrusted address, because obviously you have never used that address, you have never sent money there. Um, and it will delay the transfer by 24 hours. You contact your guardians or pick up your hardware wallet, you have time for that, and you will freeze the wallet, launch a recovery procedure. And so obviously you can whitelist um, addresses so that you can transfer as much money as you want to an exchange or prefer to your preferred address at any time. Um, we have also some uh, little tweaks here and there. So, for example, there are use cases where you have to uh, ask users to, to double check an address, critical situation, for example, account recovery. So, in that case, what we do, we hash the address into very, uh, very easy to, to check uh, emotic emojis. You check the emojis and you are done. It's again a much more relaxing experience when you think about public addresses. So, I always wanted to have a slide like that, finally done. Um, so I mentioned in Arjun, you don't have to worry about gas. You actually don't pay gas because we, uh, we, we have meta transaction, we have our own relayer. Uh, that allows much more interesting to do other interesting things. And so we are very excited to support universal login. So you will be able to have a frictionless access to any DAP. So how it works, you type your ENS, um, you, you then get a QR code, and basically what you are doing there you tell, think about a Facebook login experience, but fully decentralized. You tell your wallet, hey, I want to authorize that DAP key. 
to do something on my wallet, to give it some orders. And so in that case, I've even set a security policy so that that key is not the owner of the wallet. They cannot do whatever they want. In this case, I've said, okay, they can spend one ether a day. Uh, at any time, I go in my wallet and I can revoke, revoke access. Uh, so that's really how uh, we have thought from A to Z about the experience. Um, where, thank you. Uh, so what is maybe the most exciting part is that we are live on the App Store. So you go now to www.argent.xyz. You will have links for iOS, for Android. Uh, today, you will be in a waiting list. We are being really careful, getting users bit by bit, as we want the whole experience to be perfect. Uh, but you can already reserve your free NS, so go for it straight away. Um, since Amy hasn't cut me yet, I have another minute maybe to thank all the ecosystem. I mean, there is the ENS team and Nick, there is the Meta Cartel, uh, there is the Kyber team. I mean, uh, that wouldn't be possible without uh, all the work that has been done by the entire ecosystem. So, thanks everyone. And next up, we have Connie who's going to announce our new winner. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to announce our last prize for our last winner for our design prize. And it goes to Blue Shift. And I'd like to introduce Kane. Uh, who, and um, one of the reasons that this is really impressive for, uh, for us to see as judges is that they really get at the whole user journey. It's not just the product, which is obviously super important, but the experience of somebody trying to navigate what is the world of crypto and blockchain for the first time. And if we want to make this global, we have to think about the people who don't have access to exchanges the same way we do. So without any more. Thank you. Um, this is uh, pretty exciting uh, for me. Um, have we got the clicker? Just so I'll, yep. I'll kind of step through it. Uh, can we pause it? Oh, I don't nope. know. Okay, all right. <laughs> We're just going to walk through it. So this is a, a live demo since we couldn't do a live demo. Um, so basically, we've got this platform here, uh, which is an iPad, and it's running in 1,250 stores in Australia. And it's live now, so if you ever come to visit us in Australia, you can go and buy some crypto. And basically, the way it works is you've got uh, your Ether uh, wallet, so you've got a QR code. You scan it on the iPad. You can walk into one of these stores, and the system will detect the code, and it will allow you to purchase Ether uh, directly in store for cash, right? And this solves a lot of problems, but one of the challenges we have, as you can imagine, being in 1,250 retailers is that uh, the people who are operating this platform are not you know, technically sophisticated, right? They're um, small business owners. It needs to be super easy to use. And so we've designed the system basically to uh, be as accessible as possible um, and uh, Oh, it's paused over there, but okay. Um, so, so essentially what happens is customer walks in, they choose how much they want to purchase. Uh, they, um, the, the agent will put in, uh, as it says there, don't accept uh, credit cards because it's a cash-only service, right? So that's an ugly screen, but it's there for a very good reason. Um, and the agent will process the transaction, and they scan it into their uh, point-of-sale system to sync it up with the rest of, uh, of their accounting. And then the uh, ETH is sent to the wallet. Of the um, of the user, um, so this system uh, has been in operation since uh, about 2016. We started the company in 2014, uh, and it took us a couple of years to like find the right exchange partners and what have you. Um, but the the I guess the interesting thing uh, for me with uh, BlueShift is that we've probably now processed about uh, 100,000 transactions. So that's 100,000 real users in the real world who've walked into a store and been able to get crypto. And I think the even more exciting thing about this is that while we have the ability to purchase Bitcoin and ETH and a few other cryptocurrencies uh, over the counter, we actually want this to be a distribution method for more than just buying crypto. As you can imagine, a lot of the people who've been coming in to buy crypto have been coming in for speculative purposes, not necessarily for, uh, for usage. And so um, if you're out there and you're building uh, something that you want to get into people's hands, whether it's a game or a dApp or something like that, um, we really want to talk to you because, uh, you know, certainly in Australia and other markets as we expand, uh, we're going to be 
probably one of the easiest ways. I mean, you know, someone mentioned the uh, the mum test uh, or mom test, uh, and you know. For, for a new user coming in, yes, they've got to have a, a wallet, they've got to be able to get through all that stuff, but actually purchasing ETH to be able to do the first transaction can oftentimes, you know, you can download an app from the App Store and set up a wallet, but, you know, getting that ETH uh, to be able to kind of get into the ecosystem is quite hard. And so, uh, you know, this system allows you to get your users potentially into the ecosystem very easily. Uh, and yeah, we're we're super excited to work with uh, any teams, including we've got uh, Dieter here, uh, who's one of our partners. Um, so you know, anyone who's looking for distribution who wants to get uh, you know real world users who are not deep crypto people who kind of get all the ins and outs, uh, we're there. Um, so yeah, thanks very much. Um, really appreciate the uh, the support. It's uh, it's awesome to see because you know we kind of sit. Uh, in the middle, and we don't get as much exposure. So, you know, the Blue Shift team is kind of in the background, and so it's, it's really uh, validating to be given this award. So, thank you. Awesome. So, we had the, the judges go through quite a bit of uh, submissions, and they had a hard time at the end, but so we want to give some shout outs for some runner ups. Um, Aragon, who just did also um, for their design system and their components that they just released, CryptoCare for their kind of whimsical take on social impact, and then Status for their easy onboarding process. And the. And uh, we want to thank Known, Known Origin, who has actually provided the trophy of, of this UX Awards. Uh, it's a limited edition NFT, which all the winners will uh, receive. And this is by the uh, artist Martin Lucas Osta Ochiksiki. <laughs> um, so thank you guys all for coming. And we can't wait for the submissions for next time. <laughs>